over the weekend, so uh, it was either just uh, Silence Todd or, or me humming. Mm. I voted you singing. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody votes for me singing. All right. So moving right along, a little sneak peek of what we got coming up today. Uh, it's always a surprise because yeah. I, I do these on Friday. <laughs> I get to drinking over the weekend, and then I never know what's uh, what we got in store. Uh, but we got Todd here to give us a look at the numbers. And Mick Bernard from the Bookspan Baker team is going to give us our mortgage minute. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about your business plan. Ooh. Three key components what a concept. for your business plan. Uh, it is never too early to start talking about business plans. Uh, Minnie Thompson is going to stop by to discuss prospecting and lead follow-up. And as fun. always, uh, don't do that with Bob. And as always, you got any questions, comments, and or uh, suggestions of things that you would like to hear on the webinar, feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com, and we will get back to you in the next 45 days. All right, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, Tell us about the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, 45 days might make sense somewhere along the line. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. This is the uh, market stats for the Great Exchange Metro area for Monday, September 9th in the last previous week. Taking a look, we have 57 days closed on market this past week, a two and a half month supply, 40.76 absorption rate. Our average list prices are up to 562 and our average sale price at just under 340. On 98.25 list price to sale price retention, that's nice to see that somewhat closer and back in line where we would want it. Looking at inventory across the board, active inventory is sitting at 13,600. We're pretty much maintained that week over week. Pending is at 5,079 and closed units month to date. Well, it's just too early in the month to date. So looking at uh, new listings, they, we took 1,974 listings last week. That was up 5%. However, um, like we've always said, we need to have no less than 2,400 uh, new active listings each week this time of year seasonally in order to replenish the inventory. Uh, active inventory is sitting at 164 days on market, just a little lower than it was the week before. And closed inventory for days on market is at 57 days. Not 45, 57. That was close. Okay, taking a look at price ranges down on the bottom right-hand side of the slide, uh, we're sitting at under 500,000, representing just about 70% uh, of the market. That's down just a little bit. Uh, 500 to a million sitting at 19.9, and 1 million and up always stays just under 10%. So in comparison, looking at our spreadsheet week over week, um, last week we only took 1,887, which is why it was a five, excuse me, two weeks ago, which is why last week at 1974 was almost a 5% increase. Sounds real good, but unfortunately it's not good unless it's an increase over 2,000 or 22. We need to get to that 24 active inventory at 13.6. Again, pretty much staying where it is, but it's about 4,000 units off uh, of where we were last month. Um, so again, when we're, when we're sitting back, you know, when we're looking at the month end numbers, um, you know, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, pending is sitting at 5,069 down just a little bit. Maybe this is just fewer people in the marketplace right now because we're getting into the middle of September. Uh, but September typically on record is a pretty good month, usually about 110, 115% of an average month. Um, so it's usually representative of a good ending to the fourth quarter, getting ready for the holiday season ahead. Uh, might not be a good word, holiday season, but uh, we have to think about that. We have to, whatever we're doing today always shows up 90 days from today. So good time to uh, do a few things, uh, mostly good time to prepare uh, for those months when uh, the, you know, the business starts to slow down. What are you going to be doing um, to keep your business active? So sitting at 2.45 for a month's supply, that's a really good number right now. We've been cl very, very close to two, sometimes dipping just under. So if we're above two and a half right now, that's going to be really good. Three is our sweet spot as we talk about on an ongoing basis. So let's revisit July uh, 2019 versus 2018. We we're down 5%. This is going to be one of the first months uh, in, you know, in a little bit where we're just not taking uh, as much inventory, uh, adding as much inventory as we need. Uh, 17.6 uh, 17,600 is where we ended our active inventory for the month, uh, pretty close to where it was the, in the month before. So again, we're, uh, we're pretty happy with those numbers. Looking at pending across the board, we're sitting at 59, just under 5,900. A year ago, we were at 7,600, but we've been talking about that pretty much for the last couple of years, Mike, that, you know, the number of people that are actively pending has been going down consistently. However, 
and ironically, we're finishing up the month better than we did the year before. So again, if we look at the the pending last year, we were at seventy, almost seventy six hundred. We closed eighty five hundred. Well, this year we're at fifty nine hundred pending, but yet we closed ninety three hundred. So again, another good month, ten percent better than the month than the year before. Um, so we have had pretty much since March, maybe April, we have had positive numbers. Uh, doing better unit production this year than we did last year. This is the first year our numbers are going up versus going down over the last four years. So this is a very good sign uh, for us and for the uh, housing market overall. Um, we finished the month at 1.9 percent month. Excuse me, 1.9 month supply. Um, it, again, that was a little short, uh, primarily because we just haven't been taking the new listings. If we were taking the new listings, that would probably be in that two and a quarter, two and a half. Uh, and, and again, when we're talking about the inventory, the market, we're talking about taking new listings. If you can apply that to your own personal business as well, if you're just a little off, we talk about this. We're not just really talking about the MLS. You can apply all these numbers to your personal business and what you're doing for your uh, percentage because this is what's going on in the marketplace. Sale prices uh, for the average list price for uh, last month was 571. The average list price for uh, July last year was 536. That's a six and a half percent increase. And you know what? That's a really good number uh, because that basically is kind of in line with the four and a half percent appreciation. Uh, and, and that means that the numbers, the new properties are not driving or pushing the prices up too greatly. Um, you know, they are staying right within, you know, within where they should be. And again, 562 is where we were this past week. So again, it, w this number is lower than the 571 we finished the uh, end of the month with. So again, you, you know, your consumers are saying, hey, you know, the market's heating up, everything, the prices are going up like crazy. No, they're not. Um, so these are how this is how you can dispel some of that information. Looking at active days on market, we were at 158 last month uh, for our active versus 163. So there is about a 3% tightening, uh, slowing down, if you would, uh, as far as the uh, act number of days on market. Uh, let me rephrase that: not a slowing down, but a, a, you know a accelerating, uh, which is a good a good thing. Even though the number is lower, that means that things aren't taking as long to move. Looking at the uh, sold, which to me is one of the more important ones because because it's actually saying what's going into the inventory and what's closing, <laughs> what's actually closing. 62 days on market, we finished this month uh, and 60 a year ago. And again, we're averaging right about that 62 to 64 number. We need, the, and that's not bad because really 70 to 75 is the perfect number of days for sold inventory. So, you know, this is saying that there's still some stimulus in the marketplace. There's still some things that are driving consumers to want to buy and close. Uh, it could be indicative of of the fact that it's September uh, and it's a good month, but let's keep that thought in our head all month long. Uh, it's a good month. It's a good month. It's a good month. It's one of the best months. It's one of the best months. And let's make something happen. And uh, people like me, gosh darn it. Yeah, taking a look at uh, the final number, which is our list price to sale price retention. And for those of you who might not remember, list price to sale price retention, list price is you know the price at the time that the offer was accepted, not the original list price, but just at the time. So if there's already been price reductions, that really is or is not included in these numbers. So taking, I want, I told you last week, uh, or not last week, but a couple of weeks ago that we would do a price analysis so you could see this uh, for the year. Uh, I'm not going to take too long on these next two slides, but I do want you to put them up here for you. And then that way you can go back to these, share these with customers, put it into your listing presentation or your buyer presentation. This shows you the difference between 2018 and 2019. You can see on the way on the right hand side, the average sale prices are sitting right about 335, 340,000 uh, a year ago, they were only at 340,000, 335,000. So again, uh, we're, we're not that far. You know, we haven't increased in prices all that dramatically, but this shows you across the board all of last year, December to January, uh, and then of course, January through July of this year and how they're comparing. And again, when you see the tops of the slides and the, you know, the best I could do with the lines on the top, uh, but you can compare the lines and you can kind of see the stereotypical seasonal dips. Uh, and this is what you want to consider when you're looking at your own personal business. You want to see where those, you know, the kind of the dips are <clears throat> in pricing. Um, you know, because again, September has typically on record lower prices than than 
you know, most of the year other than February. Um, and so maybe that's one of the reasons why uh, cyclically uh, we do a lot more business in September. Overall uh, in the year, it's a 5.1% increase. Uh, and that 5.1% increase basically is again, indicative of the fact that it's right in line with the four to four and a half percent appreciation. Um, all right. And, so, uh, all right, appreciate no, it. Yeah, we got one more. So, uh, yeah. you, well, you don't. Oh, I don't. You took it out. All right, that's. I fine. didn't take it out. You oh. didn't send it. Well, maybe I deleted it. All right. Oh well. We anyway, were... so moving right along. So, uh, so Todd, uh, why don't you introduce Mick? We <laughs> 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 right, have Mick Bernard here from the Bookspan Baker team. Give us our little mortgage uh, update. What's going on with rates, man? Rates have crept a little bit up. You no, know, we're always trading a trading range, and so towards the end of last week, we hit a, we hit a bump. Well, should we hit the barrier of are we going to exceed and go into lower rates or are we going to bounce back? And we bounced back a little bit. So I, I think what's going to happen is depending upon people take it's technical trading at this point. Do bond traders want to take a profit? If they continue to take a profit, these rates will creep a little bit. Once they see it's a buying opportunity again, they're going to buy and the rates are going to go back down. But we've been in a tight trading range of about a quarter of a percent or so probably for the last two, three months. And so I really would expect them to kind of creep back down again, unless we get some sort of major economic news, like there's some sort of a settlement with China, there's something going on with North Korea. So those those are uh, kind of wild cards that could come into the, the rate game. But other than that, I think we're going to see these in, in the high well, threes. And, low and I think the also thing that's uh, having a negative impact on the market is the NFL's overtime rules. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> OK, that's a that's a huge problem. No game should ever end in a tie. <laughs> Right, I hear you. Uh, Speaking of fraud, we could do a whole web, we could do a whole <laughs> webinar on the Cardinal game, I think, though. And so today we're going to talk about what we refer to in the mortgage industry as the F word, uh, fraud. We don't like to talk about that, but today, you know, as far as on applications, but today we're going to talk about wire fraud. You know, I, I attend most of the branch office meetings where the agents come in and the brokers speak. And over the last month or so, I know Dean and a few of the other brokers have talked about actual situations where our clients have sent money, wired money to a wrong account. Uh, luckily, I've seen where it's been recovered, but here's what you want to do. You want to make sure that if your client gets wire instructions emailed to them, uh, they need to, uh, which is the next step, never never accept them via email without verifying everything. Pick up the phone, call your, your, your escrow agent and say, hey, did you just wire me these instructions and here are the instructions I have? Are they correct? Right? And so, uh, again, be sure you're confirming all that information. Get it exactly as it appears on the account. After the transfer, here's a key, because I can tell you that I was in a meeting last week and Dean was speaking. Somebody, one of West USA's buyers wired $140,000 to a wrong account. But because they were called to verify whether it's received or not, it wasn't. And they were, the FBI was able to recover the money. Wow. I'm, uh, I just... I like to wake up one day and somebody accidentally wire $140,000 into my account. That'd exactly. be fantastic. <laughs> that would be. From a third world. I guess, uh, I, guess, I guess unless there was another West USA clients you know, down payment for their house, then that would potentially be an issue, right? And so verify. We talk about that all the time, right? Verify, verify, verify. I can't tell you how many clients now we have. They're, they're just taking checks in again, right? They're just taking a cashier's check, not going to trust the wire system. Here's the money. They hand it to the escrow agent, get a receipt, and it's a done deal. And so whatever your your folks are comfortable with, you know, if you have somebody that's from out of state, which is very common, you know, we send documents all over the country for people to sign. And that's the case. They've got to wire money and they can't deliver a check. Make sure they're verifying the information. Uh, and we have e-verify information. We have a whole uh, system set up within our system to make sure that wire instructions are accurate. So, again, if you have any issues, hopefully you're using Fairway for your loan. We can check in our system to make sure that the information is correct as well. All right, let's talk burgers. Let's talk burgers. Nick, let's talk burgers. I'm, I'm always ready to talk burgers. So the 18th, if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, please get it. Uh, the truck will be there. We're going to have a fun time. It's uh, a week from, is it Wednesday? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Week from Wednesday. So kind of, it's a, it'll be fun. We're going to have well, games. We'll have uh, music going on. Uh, we have a really nice office. For those of you who haven't seen it, uh, come by and see it because one offer that we always make available as well. Check out the office because if you're ever in that area with a client, we always have extra conference rooms where you can just bring your client in 
and uh, talk business. That's awesome. Yeah, and the most important thing, I know that Nick and I, we've been getting a lot of uh, emails, text messages from the America's Burger Club members going, "When's uh, when's the se- where's the September Burger Club event? This is it. Yeah, this so, is the event. So, so we're partnering with Fairway. So what's really cool about this is uh, $15 is going to get you a burger, a drink, and an event T-shirt. But more importantly, um, it's not just Mick flipping burgers from behind some uh, grill. We're going to have the Aoli Burger oh, Truck. Yeah. Aoli is one of the oh, top-rated burgers in the entire entire state of Arizona. I just want to clear something real quick. So I've had a couple people reach out and say 15 bucks for a burger and fries. It's crazy. Every other place we've gone to, and I guarantee any place you'll get a burger. It's a gourmet it's, burger. Yeah. It's going to be 20 bucks. Get out the door. You get a shirt, a drink, fries, and a really good burger, $15. It's a really good price. So yeah. stop with the complaint and buy the ticket and we'll see you on the 18th. And, and even more importantly than this, uh, we are sponsoring the Phoenix Boys and Girls Club on this event. So everybody is uh, invited and uh, asked to bring a pair of shoes for kids. Yeah. So Do they have any sizes that they specified? Uh, uh, ten and a half, please, okay. men's. <laughs> 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 All right, right, tell us about the Booksman Baker team difference. Well, I think it's a uh, loan status updates. Uh, I had a client, uh, an agent, the other day in the office was. Amazing. She asked me what kind of follow up system we had, and I explained to her how LSU's come out on every Tuesday. Plus, we follow up with a phone call. She was amazing. You know, she. I'm tired of calling lenders trying to find out. Uh, what is the status of my deal? But every Tuesday, like clockwork, the buyer gets a loan status update, and each agent get a loan status update sent email to them. All right, Mick, appreciate it. Cool. Thank as you guys. Always. All right, moving right along to the to the three pack. Uh, Todd, I would much rather just pour acid over my face and have to sit down and put together a business plan. I uh, putting together business <laughs> okay, plans. Wow. Yeah. A, I know it's a little harsh. Yeah, that's but, deep. <laughs> but business plans, they're they're exhausting. They're they're very hard because yeah. for me is you get going on a business plan and I just go down these rabbit holes and sometimes I don't pop up for days. And so what I thought I would do, because this is the time of year that we really need to start planning for the following year, Uh, 2020 will come quickly upon us. So what I did is you take a look at all the things that a business plan includes. And I just wanted to throw out three key components of your business plan. Number one, you have to identify your primary source of leads, okay? Not to say that you're only going to have one lead source, but start with where are your primary uh, source of leads going to come from? Uh, I threw out some examples. Uh, it could be internet leads. Um, you could have a, a robust social media campaign. It, you could be setting out to say, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna dominate my neighborhood. It could be through open houses. Uh, it could be working your sphere of influence. If you have multiple multiple lead sources in your business plan, which you should, maybe just start numbering them and prioritize prioritizing them, but identify what is the number one so you can begin to build the, um, the, the plan. Yeah. And that has a lot to do with who you are. I mean, the kind of wiring you have. I mean, some people may be fine knocking on doors, uh, may be fine, you know, uh, just soliciting people as they walk by. Um, you know, other people kind of want a reason. So maybe sometimes, you know, you you establish recontacting people that you've maybe met or already know, uh, things of that nature. So it really depends upon, you know, really more your wiring. Your coach can help you with that, trying to find out. Or you can go to westusadisc.com, uh, take a disc for yourself and have it, you know, to thine own self be true, right? That, you know, <laughs> If somebody tells you this is the way to success, but you don't like doing it, guess what? You're not going to be successful doing it that way. You know, so you really have to make sure that's in line uh, with what you want. One last topic on uh, one last point on this. One last point on this, which is if you're going to do multiple things, use different emails or use different phone numbers in your marketing so that you can identify where that source is. You know, the leads that are coming from that source. Tracking is probably the number one thing as a successful agent you need to do to be able to identify where you're spending your time and where you're getting your most return. All right. Uh, number two, uh, when putting in the <clears throat> business plan. Okay. So once you've figured out your primary source of leads, how are you going to reach them? Mm. Uh, what steps are you going to take? And once you, you know, begin to build out the steps, bullet point it, do whiteboard it, uh, make a detailed plan and then implement your plan. So if I'm going to, if, if, if mine is going to be sphere of influence, so I'm going to begin to talk about, okay, what are the steps that I'm going to take? Who is in my sphere of influence? Uh, and if I put together a hundred people in my sphere of influence, who's, who's in my top, I, I, I go with top 12, uh, who's in my next group and then who's in my other group. And then when I take a look at my top 12, what is my detailed plan? How am I going to reach my sphere of influence? What, 
how am I going to contact them? How am I going to bring them into the fold? How am I going to make them ambassadors for my business? How frequently am I going to communicate with them? What's that initial communication going to be like? Uh, I like I call it a power lunch. I, I take mine out to, to a power lunch. Let's go have lunch. Uh, and, and how are you going to begin the, begin the conversation? Uh, and each one of your source of leads, you're going to do that. You have to put together a detailed plan. And then once you put together the de detailed plan, you got to implement the plan. You got to start moving forward. And that's why I like, you know, looking at these lead sources as individual. Uh, if you start thinking about three or four lead sources at the same time, yeah. uh, then it's going to get confusing and then it might result in paralysis instead of saying, okay, this is my primary lead source. This is my detailed plan. And now I'm going to implement the plan. Once I got the plan implemented, then I'll go to my next source of leads. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. You know, I think the, the first thing is, you know, when we talk about your top 12, the goal is, so here's the definition, my definition of the top 12, Mike, if you have a different one, obviously, uh, pine in, but the, the topic is who are the, tw of all the people in my database, of all the people in my world, who are the top 12 that I, that would most likely refer future yeah. business to me? Who could and who should be referring you business? Right. Those are the people you have to focus on as your top people. Those are the people that you, you do sp spend most of your energy on is, is in communicating and, you know, w with those, uh, with those people and then the second and then the other piece was uh, that when you talk about how when we all talk about having a plan today or any day uh the the goal of a plan is is really more in in a social media plan or an internet or a business plan is more of a checklist that allows you to ensure you're doing the same thing yep. repetitiously yep. you know it, that's working for you so the tracking comes together with those two pieces so make sure you're you know make sure that you're you're actually uh, tracking those numbers. yeah and i would also say uh I mean, we talk about this all the time, but you're, the first page of your business plans should be uh, what CRM system you're going to use and how you're going to implement it. Yeah. Because these these plans, you know, doing things in repetition don't happen unless you're using a CRM system. Yeah. And then the third thing, and this is the the topic that we don't like to discuss, is how much it's going to cost. Okay, if I've identified my primary source of leads, and I've determined my marketing plan, how I'm going to reach them, I've got to determine how much it's going to cost. Unfortunately, marketing costs dollars. You get what you pay for. Yeah. But estimate how much you'll need to spend. Determine where those funds are going to come from. Are you starting out with a marketing budget? Are you taking a percentage of each commission and putting it towards marketing? Uh, determining your ideal um, rate of return. How do I know that this is being successful? How do I know it's not being successful? How do I know when it's time to modify? How do I know when it's time to cut the cord? Yep, there you At go. some point, I've, I've got my wife into a couple of businesses ideas and there was a point in time where uh, we just had to cut the cord because yep. we were never gonna make back the money and it was proving not to be successful. Yep. Uh, and determine if and when you will need to increase that budget. If, if I'm, you know, if I got a couple different primary uh, lead sources and one of them is showing promise and one of them is, is showing results, maybe it's time to increase that spend yep. uh, so that I can inc increase the ROI on it. Yeah. If, and if there was anything you were going to gamble on, anything that you were going to seed, um, it would be take out your credit card and spend money in your in, in your marketing budget. Uh, you know, these are things when you get into real estate, the one thing we don't think about is, you know, it's easy entry, right? 90 hours, um, cost you maybe a thousand, fifteen hundred, maybe two thousand to the outside to have your business card signed you know, join the boards, be prepared. And then we're like, okay, I'm so I'm in real estate. Great. You know, where's my next client coming from? And 80, I'd say 80, 90% of all realtors, the, the number one problem they have is they can't find tomorrow. Then, let me rephrase that. They won't. Yeah, no. Well, <laughs> that's true in spite of themselves, but they won't wake up in the morning and go find their next deal. That's the biggest separation of people in this business is the fact that, you know, and I don't know whether it's self-employment. I don't know whether it's, the, you know, because you, know, you don't have that boss over your shoulder. I don't know the reason why, but that seems to be the piece that is separating successful realtors from those that aren't yet successful or aren't is they wake up every single morning and they know their job is solely to just go find new buyers or sellers. That's everybody's job. That's the deal. Well, I think having a plan like this kind of puts that person behind you saying you need to go out and do those things. So if you have your plan, it says this is what I'm going to work on. This, these are I'm going to work on social media. I'm going to work on Internet leads. That's my plan. So that's what I have to go and do that day. And the other thing that I would look at when it comes to your cost is your time. Your time is probably okay. one of the most valuable things that you have. If you're spending hours and hours on social media and you're not getting anything out of it, again, that's what Mike says all the time. If you're not getting anything out of it. 
you're getting something out of it. Stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. Focus on what you're yeah. doing. And yeah. if it's not your ROI, sign. exactly. You yeah. need to be looking elsewhere to put your time and resources. Excellent. All right, Todd. Appreciate it as yeah. always. Thanks, Nick. And as always, all these slides will be uh, added to the uh, dashboard later on this afternoon. All right. I'm excited. All right. A couple announcements. Uh, pretty much all the same announcement. Uh, <laughs> Keith Flynn has uh, got three of the same classes going on around the Valley. Uh, it's his personal branding for real estate professionals. I, I, I do need to say, um, and I might get in some trouble here. I, I know all of our offices have autonomy and they bring in a lot of speakers and I'm starting to see other people coming in and doing personal branding classes. But I'm just telling you, a lot of people's definitions of personal totally. branding yeah. are completely different. Uh, I know for a fact, because I've, 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 I've I'm, I'm Keith's personal mentor and coach. You're welcome, Keith. <laughs> I am the wind beneath his wings. Um, but he knows what he's talking about. And he's got a, he, his finger is on the pulse of this. And so I would highly recommend uh, every single agent taking this class because part of uh, your business plan is creating your personal brand. And Keith's the guy to help you with it. So the website right there, azrealestatetraining.com, Nick's going to send that link out to you so you can sign up for one of these three classes. Okay, so Tuesday, September 10th, that's tomorrow. Uh, they're going to be at the Chandler office. So anyone out in the East Valley, feel free to attend that one. Uh, Wednesday, um, this is the only one that I wouldn't go because it's not lunch is not included in this one, but <laughs> the education is still the best. So, so the Gin surprise Ginger's going to send out a lynch crew. <laughs> Yeah, or, 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 yeah. Well, maybe Ginger should probably provide some sandwiches. Uh, anyways, uh, September 11th, Wednesday, Keith's going to be at the surprise office. And Thursday, uh, September 12th, uh, Keith's going to be here at the corporate office at bringing lunch again. Did you have something? Well, before you go to the next thing, I want to. I have two things that I wanted to bring up before we jump into the special guest. So okay. what are you done? Yeah, I'm done. I found Todd's slide. Mike did actually delete it. He's, he wasn't wrong. So Todd actually has a great slide that is very, very important and we should not delete and skip out of the webinar. So we have a lot of other ways that we are pushing out content for all of our agents. So not just the webinar, we're also on Alexa. So if you have an Alexa and hopefully if you, if your Alexa can hear me, it just turned on and you want to order me a pizza. <laughs> you want to do the flash news briefings. That's West USA's flash news briefing. Um, we're also on Apple Podcasts, so we do have a podcast in Apple iTunes. We're on the Google Play Store as well for podcasts, Spotify for podcasts, and then um, this uh, weekly webinar. Our personal on branding expert just came in to take a picture and just realized he didn't have his camera, so yeah, uh, he's going to leave. That's fantastic. All right, so there's a lot of other ways you can get this information. We break it into small segments, so if you're just looking for Todd's stats, you can just listen to that, the three-pack and so forth. And then really quick, Lynn, uh, we had a great, great question from Linda. She asked about Artisan Color sending an email. Artisan Color is the new print service for West USA. So if you need signs, business cards, anything printed, they can print anything on anything. Um, that's who you are going to use. Quantum Digital is a direct mail marketing system. So that's the difference. Yeah. Uh, Artisan, they'll print signs, postcards if you want them. But Quantum Digital will do the automated, just automated, listed, just, just, sold. just sold postcards. Okay. Exactly. So that's the difference. If you have any questions about what Artisan Color can provide, shoot me an email, nick at westusa.com. Um, and then Ginger sent us a message <laughs> who said, eat before you come. <laughs> Ginger, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to bring in uh, Mindy Thompson. I Mindy, I don't even know your, uh, your title. What is your title? I am Director of Career Services for West USA. I am recruiting here. Okay, but more importantly, and I, I wanted to point out, you're also a, uh, a coach uh, for, I think, one of the fairy dudes. Uh, or, the, my, the fairy dude, his name is Mike Ferry. Okay. So, so <laughs> you are, you are a coach for Mike Ferry. So, so when you come in here, um, you coach agents from across at least the state. I don't know about the, the across the country in productivity. So, uh, so you have an idea of what you're talking about. So I wanted to preface that. So Thank people you. are like, well, who's Mindy? Right. So, all right. Anyway, so let's start with the first tip, uh, prospecting. It's a dirty word, Mike. It is uh, a dirty word. In my experience, uh, real estate agents do not like to hear this word. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember we had coffee a couple of years ago and you said, I don't know how to talk to these agents. They don't want to hear the word prospect. And it's true. Well, why? Let's, let's break it down. What really is prospecting? It's really just talking to people. 
right? That's all it is. Making friends right? and influencing people. For sure. So it's on the phone. I define it as on the phone or face-to-face -face conversations where real estate is brought up. And it's really that simple. So if I call Nick and we're chit-chatting about last night's game, not prospecting, okay? But if at some point I bring up real estate and I say, hey, Nick, who do you know that I might be able to help? You know, who needs some advice? Prospecting. See, see, sorry if I just screamed into the phone. <laughs> uh, uh, totally, two totally different things. And, and the word prospecting has, uh, has a bad rap. And, and I'll tell you from my experience the reasons why. Uh, one is I don't want to sound like a salesperson. Right. Uh, I got into real estate, but I don't want people to know I'm a salesperson. Right. Kind of kind of funny if you put it that way. Um, I hear a lot. People don't like to be solicited. Right. I don't like when people cold call me. I don't like when people show up at my door. I don't want to do that either. OK, fair enough. Um, I don't like or I'm afraid of being rejected by people, mm -hmm. right, which I can totally understand. And when it comes to rejection, I don't think anyone particularly likes it. Um, we're selling homes, though. We're not selling vacuums. We're not even selling cars. Uh, people are not out there looking to buy a home or sell a home every single day. Uh, so if you were to call me today and say, hey, Mindy, are you looking to sell your house? And I said no, because I'm really not. Are you going to get offended by that? I mean, right? Yeah, it's not. Right? A, it's going to ruin my day. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, it's going to ruin your day. Yeah, it does. And it's not necessarily a rejection. It's just a matter of fact. Yeah. But then you get people like Nick over here. Nick would be fantastic in sales. I think he asked fifteen women to marry him uh, before Sean it's a numbers agreed game. to. It's a numbers <laughs> game. <laughs> it is. That's so true. Excellent, excellent throw out, Nick. Yeah, it is a numbers game. It's true. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's for another day. Uh, <laughs> technology uh, has made it such that I don't need to get out and talk to people. So I'm going to hide behind my computer. I'm going to hide behind my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, buy ads and all of that stuff. And, and this may be an unpopular opinion I have, uh, but real estate is, was, and always will be a people and relationship oriented business, yeah, right? Definitely. So if we're not out there communicating and talking with people, we won't have any clients. We don't have any clients and not for very long. So, but I think I, I know Nick just kind of threw that out there, but it really, it, it really is a numbers game. <laughs> yeah. And, mm -hmm. and there's a lot less rejection uh, and there's a lot less offending people. If, if you're calling people up and you're meeting with people and you're really interested in their lives, you're mm -hmm. building relationships. When I, when I, you know, when I, when I approach my top 12, uh, it's a matter of I'm walking into this situation from the onset of how I can help them. Uh -huh. if, if real estate doesn't come up for two to three meetings, but I'm providing them something of value, whether it's leads or or something that they need in their personal life, then then it's it's a win. Because when you build relationships with people, it's hard to be offended and you're not going to get rejected. If you haven't talked to somebody for two years and you call them up and say, hey, you're looking to buy or sell right. your home and you know anyone who will, I would be put off by that yeah, personally sure. yeah. as the receiver of, of that call. But of when you're on social media, it, it shouldn't be just a, I'm on social media to be on social media. Why are you on social media? If you have posts on any of your pages and someone has liked the post or, or God forbid commented on it and you've never even spoken to them about buying or selling a house, are you going to ignore that person? <laughs> no, it's a relationship business. Right. Why did you, thank you so much for liking this listing. I'm so happy. This is one of my favorite listings I have right now. What about this listing got you to like it? Right. Thank you for commenting and have a conversation. Don't just ignore them because That's it's good. social media. Well, nobody ever follows up with a second question, which is, or, or the second <laughs> post, which is thank you for posting. Right. You know, yeah. uh -huh. they just yeah. click the little emoji. All right. So it is our job to talk to people. If you don't like people and you don't like to talk to people, <laughs> This is probably, um, honestly, Ooh, this yeah. is not the profession for yeah. you. And for some of us, I think we need to take, you know, we need to take personal inventory. Right. Um, if the thought of just talking to people terrifies you, you you've either got to figure out how to overcome it, start drinking more, or choose another <laughs> profession. Get the out of hand. Get the out of hand. This surprises me. And I, obviously, I talk to a lot of people that are getting into real estate and have been in real estate for a while. And I hear all the time, like, I don't like talking to people. I, and, 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 and that's, and that's our job. Um, when we first get into real estate, we don't always know it's our job. And when we've been in real estate a while, sometimes we forget it's our job, but if we want to find buyers and sellers, um, we've got to be 
looking for them, right? Yeah. So um, there are a lot of questions we can be asking people in our day-to-day -day conversations uh, to find out who might need some real estate advice or your expertise. Um, if you want to know what these questions are, they're not rocket science. Ask your coach, ask your manager, ask one of us, uh, call me. Uh, Mindy T at westusa.com if you want to email me and I'll give you a couple of, of really good questions. Um, and, and I wanted to leave this point with a note um, that the days that go by that you're not out talking to people, you're not in business on those days. Okay. You're close. Yeah. Ooh, right. Man, like and, that. and your competitors That's are good. Yeah. That's a good one. Right. Right. And, and Nick, how many licenses did we say are in the County of over 40,000 or something like that right yeah, now, active Maricopa, real estate yeah. licenses. So you only have a few competitors out there, <laughs> right? <laughs> so if you don't want to get out and talk to people, uh, someone else will be. And so it's really up to you to decide, are you in business today or not? I tell, I tell our agents when you wake up every day, you're not in the business of selling homes you're in the business of making relationships. That is why you exist. And if you focus on making relationships in a strategic way, then you will. You know, and, and to Nick's point earlier, you know, the, the fact is, is that the, he used the term of your time uh, in the previous segment. And the thing was, time is you don't get that back. You know, you get 86,400 seconds in a day. The question is, you know, what are you doing with those? And to Mike's point, if you're not doing income productive activities, then you're it's a hobby you're not doing anything yeah you're walking around we should uh, you should we should give every agent a a big old necklace with a medallion one side says close the other side says <laughs> open and and you just flip it right you know when you're talking to people you're open for business when you're not you're closed i like that yeah. all right number three being <laughs> passive Vase uh, being active with your real estate business. Right. Okay. So it's kind of like Todd talked about earlier when we got our real estate license. Okay. You became a business owner and that's kind of bananas because a lot of people have never run a business, right? And we don't know how to uh, predict our business trends and track uh, what's working and what's not working in our business. And, and I'll tell you a way uh, to be able to kind of uh, build a build a predictable business and when it comes to the word prospecting right so we're just going to go ahead and say it now it's prospecting and uh, it's out there talking to people and there are two ways to go about it okay and I'm going to start out by saying neither way is wrong there are just two different ways one way is passive and the other is active okay um, so let's start with passive prospecting okay passive prospecting is any activity where we put something out and then we wait on people to respond to it. So some examples of that are things like open houses, okay? Uh, we put out signs, we set up cookies and bottles of water inside, and we go in and we sit and we hope people are going to come in, <laughs> right? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, right? Can't control it, okay? Another example is sending out postcards to a neighborhood. Once again, Great thing to do, not a bad thing to do, but can we control how many people are going to call us based on that? No, there's 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 no way. Uh, same with Facebook ads or posts. Once again, I always encourage people to do it, but we can't control the response we're going to get. Okay, so let's move on to active prospecting. Um, examples of active prospecting are, are things that we do where we can control the result of it. So uh, Mike has a list of his past clients. Mike wants to talk to five of them today. Mike, can you pick up the phone and dial until you've had five conversations? With yes, I can. Okay, so you can control that outcome. Another example is, Todd, um, you're out knocking on doors to prepare for your open house. Can you say, I'm going to knock till I talk to 10 people today? Certainly. Okay, so those are examples of things that we can control um, the outcome. And once again, I'm going to start out by saying both are, are worthwhile activities, but if you want to really be in control of the outcome and the results of your activities. You'll want to be involved in more of the active activities and then not rely on the passive, okay? So um, maybe a great activity is for agents to take inventory, get a piece of paper, a whiteboard, all the activities that you do in real estate and then start, you know, uh, you know, put P next to the ones that are passive and A's next to the word active. And you might see a, a complete unbalance mm -hmm. in your approach. And maybe you're doing too much passive and that's telling you to get a little more active. And to Todd's point uh, of him knocking on 10 doors, he did just turn 60. <laughs> so the first 10 doors, better answer. <laughs> 
No, actually, <laughs> actually, the, it, it's having the ability to get the right answer from the people that don't want to give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, that's let's what talk H about does. following up with our leads because that is that is key. Follow up is everything. Yeah, if you're not going to follow up with your leads, then I'll tell you right now, don't prospect. So there's no <laughs> point. Um, uh, following up, uh, well, first of all, what's a lead? Let's just get Yay. this this clarified because um, a lead um, is not necessarily someone that signs into your open house and gives you their email address. Okay, a lead isn't someone who at the door says, you know, sure, put me on your email list. That's fine. Here's here's my contact info. Right? Those are great database ads. Okay, those are great database ads. They're not leads. Okay, so the way we'll define a lead is anyone looking to buy or sell in the relatively near future. And I have specific numbers for coaching clients. Each one's different depending on their, their business goals, right? So if Mike's gonna sell 50 houses this year, his definition of a lead is gonna be different from Nick who wants to sell five, okay? So I'm gonna say relatively near future. I say 90 days or less as a rule of thumb. I know you're all gonna go back and define a lead as everything five years out and less. And so that's going to be- I call it the Pulse and FICO uh, program. If you have a Pulse and a FICO score, you're a lead. <laughs> that's a prospect. That's a great prospect. <laughs> okay. Um, so when we're out prospecting and talking to people, okay, and we've generated a list of some solid leads, okay, let's talk about being effective in following up with them. Um, I know a lot of people don't like to do follow up because they A, don't know what to say, and they B, feel like they're bothering people. And uh, if you know, don't know what to say, when you're following up with a lead, once again, get with one of us, get with your office manager, your coach, your team leader, and, and it's normal. No one's gonna think that's silly, but let's make sure that you get that script down because it's really, really important. Um, and if you don't wanna bother people, um, I wanted to remind you of the number of active real estate licenses <laughs> in the county, okay? And the number of people out there that they can Google, Zillow, whatever the case may be, and find a realtor that will follow up with them, okay? Um, and I want to remind you that uh, so much of our business is customer service, right? And if Todd tells me uh, he's going to call me back about buying a home, and if Todd doesn't call me, uh -oh. I don't think he's someone I want to work with. I don't think I can count on him. You know, so a lot of this follow up is simply about keeping our word and providing excellent customer service to our clients. OK, and as a rule of thumb, I wanted to end with this point with a note. Um, we're never going to lose a lead from aggressively following up. OK, we lose leads because we do not follow up That's enough, really Correct. okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna repeat that one. We will not yeah. lose a lead from following up too often. We lose them when we don't follow up enough. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and I say my wife, uh, you know, one thing I, I appreciate about her, and we always talk about making it, making good on your deliverables. If you say you're gonna deliver something, do it. She will not go to bed. Will not go to bed until everything, every deliverable she's promised to get sent out that day, get sent out. And, and, that's why she's you know, and, better than me. And, and I just want to say also, uh, yes, Mike. No, I just want to say also to uh, to Mindy's point, which is, you know, you need to, if most of us think that the objective of a salesperson is to sell somebody into a house or sell somebody into a product. Sure, there's a demonstration phase, but the reality is you're there to provide information. So the best way to provide the most accurate information is to ask them what they need. Ask questions. If you don't know, you know, the, the neuro linguistic programming scripts to, to change somebody's mind or the way they're thinking, the best thing to do. I can't even yeah. pronounce yeah. that. Yeah. The, best, the best, <laughs> best thing to do is to just ask a lot of questions. Looking it they're going right to yeah, <laughs> they're gonna give you, they're going to give you the answers that you need to have to be able to answer correctly. All right. Number five, uh, cut time in half. Easy rule of thumb. Uh, so how much is too much? How little is too little when it comes to our lead follow up? And I will give you a, the, the black and white rule for every lead you have. Um, always cut the time frame in half that they ask you to contact them in. OK, mm -hmm. so if I say, uh, hey, Todd, I'm looking to buy in a year. Todd's going to call me in six months. Okay. If I say, yeah, Nick, I am looking to sell, call me in two months. Nick's going to call me in a month. If I say a week, call me in three and a half days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Flat blanket rule. It will always make sure that you stay in front of their si selling or buying decision. Um, because once again, if 
they're going to look to sell and we call them the week before they've already got an agent they've mm -hmm. signed a contract they're ready to go right this will always ensure that we are ahead of them and once again providing excellent customer service for our clients um last but not least you want to have a good system right for keeping track of these guys mike recommends crms i use a crm i think that's a great idea um your CRM is only as good as you are, though. There so you if go. you suck at technology or your your system and it's not going to work for you, don't hide your leads in there where you're not going to see them. OK, go old school, go three by five cards, go lead hot sheet that's, that's out on easy. your desk, whatever, whatever Needs system to. works for you yep. so that you don't lose track of these guys and that you're always half the time frame in front of them. Whatever works for you is the right one for you, but make sure you have a system. Yeah. Well, that's why everybody always asks. I get the question all the time. Well, what's the best CRM system out there? My answer is the one that you're going to use. Yes. Yeah. You know, if it's three by five cards and, and that's I, I, it, that's an affront to me. But if that's what works for you, right. then that's what works for you. Uh, and I always uh, I you know, my my tip on on CRM systems is they're all very, very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And we get to these classes or we get to these webinars or we do these demos and it tells you all the things that the CRM system can do for you. And it's so overwhelming. Yeah. It, it causes paralysis and then we're like okay well I, then we just don't do anything with it instead you need to identify what you need a crm system to do for you what is the purpose that you're going to use the crm system and then that's how you approach the crm system and then you can you can ignore all the other noise you don't need all the other bells and whistles till later on down the road just figure out what you needed to do for so you. i'm gonna i'm gonna just ask somebody this look in the mirror and tell yourself ask yourself do i know how to use all the services on my cell phone and if the answer is no, then you need help getting help, like a concierge service, a you know wise agent or somebody to help you uh, make that happen. Because otherwise, you've got this great tool, this great technology, and you don't know how to use it, and you're allowing yourself not to know how to use it. And and as far as CRMs are concerned, I'd like to relate it the same to that. So if you can say that you honestly have command and control of all the options, all the functions that your cell phone has, then you're probably one that can figure it out for yourself. But if you don't, that's when you, this is the whole thing we're talking about today is if you have tried this and you're still not successful or, or you, you don't know how to enter into this, you need a coach. You need to reach out and help, have somebody there to help you help yourself. All right. Uh, true story. Last week, I had to get help on how to change my voicemail on my phone. So <laughs> I may not be the candidate for that. Thanks, Mindy. Mindy, that was awesome. Yeah, that was Thank great. you very, very much. All right. Yeah, we we're going to. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to bring up a Bob for a little uh, stay out of trouble and don't do that. I do want to remind everybody September 18th. Um, uh, we are doing our America's Burger Club down at Fairway. Aoli Food Truck is going to come. If uh, you need some inf more information, all you have to do is go to americasburgerclub.com and you'll get all the information that you need. All right, Bob. Good morning, good morning Bob. and uh, help us stay out of trouble. Notice good Bob's, morning. Notice Bob's not wearing his red cardinal hat today. I'm not wearing a red cardinal hat. Uh -oh. That's right. He's upset uh, with Murray. This one says WUSA on it, or West USA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> By the way, something good came out of that game yesterday. You can get a free Jack in the Box. You do know that, yeah. don't you? Today, yeah. yeah so that's uh, that's anyway, great. Yeah. Anyway, we enjoyed the game. There was that is the most value that you've brought to this webinar in years. I want to appreciate <laughs> that. Food. I'm going out to Jack in the Box right after this. Yeah, you got to buy this bunch of Dr Pepper that'll last you for a year. But uh, I just dump it out and go ahead with my sandwich. And <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to court today, shall we? We, we didn't. It's time really for me to leave. Court. I think <laughs> this is one of those things. I wonder what you would do if you went to court with this one. And, and I was looking over a contract, and uh, there's a problem with it now. After it closed in January. And the dishwasher quit working. And so the woman is calling in and saying that she wants to complain about the salesperson. Well, the salesperson didn't cause the dishwasher to stop. And uh, so that would be something that the seller may have to, I, I don't know, we'll get to it. We're working on it. But in any event, we want the, the client to go away happy somehow. I don't know that she will, but... Uh, Here's what is also in this contract. 
refrigerator, washer, and dryer go with the property? And which ones are those? And you see this, uh, Todd? Mm -hmm. You can see as it seen. says, as seen on 1 6 2019 in the home. There's three places where it says it. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you wind up in court, what's the judge going to say? I suppose he'd like to have a picture of these things so he knows uh, that they existed for one thing and what they were. Uh, we're not in court on this. Don't don't get anything wrong here. But what would happen if you did go to court with this? This would be a kind of a mess because you got to prove it. So I suggest that you go in and you've you got a refrigerator, open up the door and go to the upper right-hand corner and take a picture of it of the model number and everything, take pictures of stuff but so that you can prove what it was you were talking about and then name it. It, it asks you to, it says description there, so, so name it so that if you ever had to go and prove something, you might win. Um, I always want to win. Why not? Or tie at least. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now that there is such a thing. <laughs> yeah, and uh, another thing I uh, we ran across here in this past week, uh, somebody waived their inspections. Here they write in here, and, and I'm talking about the same person, as a matter of fact, on the same contract. Buyer's waiver of inspections, they signed this thing. Why would somebody sign that? Well, they did not want to have an inspection by a, an inspector and thought they need to sign that. Well, they did. And uh, do we know that they signed that? What do we got? So we have the uh, property inspection, a disclosure and release for residential property inspection. We understand that West USA highly recommends an independent property inspection for mold infestation, all kinds of stuff here. I can remember when I wrote this many years ago, even roof rats, scorpions, and everything in there, and the due diligence section of the purchase contract. Uh, when you do that and you get the buyer to sign that, you know you've told them that they should have it. And so, I, I don't know, is this called for anymore in the uh, it's not a required form, but it's certainly I something. don't know that it's even called for, but I would use it. I would absolutely use this thing. It's a it's a good piece of paper here that... Uh, and what A form number is that, Bob? What is it? What's the A, a number on there? A106R, and I looked for it, and I couldn't find it in the A forms. <laughs> so I don't know if it's available, but you can get it from me because I've got it on my computer if I ever get the computer hook back up. I got somebody in the bedroom today or in my office putting tile down this morning. I hope he gets that done by the time I get home. Nah, <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. And then we had a meeting the other day up there in Arrowhead and we did uh, real estate advertising rules and guidance and we had a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, everybody's asking me about this stuff. Advertising, nothing has changed in years and years and years. Oh, there's just one thing that did change, but it had nothing to do. It wasn't the advertising. It, it's the social media. Now they're advertising there, and they believe that that belongs to them. It's their Facebook account, and certainly they don't need to ask us about it. Well, yes, you do. It says so, and they've uh, uh, not too long ago, they kind of, updated some of this stuff so that you understand social media or whatever you get into, you need to look at these forms. Now, this form came right out of the uh, Department of Real Estate, ADRE. I went down there and they've got these file right out there and you can get these down there, but you don't have to go down there. Send me an email and I'll send it to you because I have it on my computer if I get it hooked back up, <laughs> but I know I will. <laughs> a good rule of thumb, excuse me, a good rule of thumb with your social media pages is treat them like a website. You have to get your website compliance checked by the brokers. I would do the same thing with your social media. The same rules and regulations apply for ADRE. There's no difference. No difference. But some folks have that feeling, well, as a matter of fact, one person said, well, that's my site. 
why, why do I have to do it? I, because you do. <laughs> everything. There's one broker standing up for 2,500 agents, and everything that they do, those 2,500 people, it comes right down to the broker's fault. So we don't, we, we don't want any faults here. We want these things to be handled. And uh, like so. one of the big ones that we had the other day was one of the fellows, uh, he's been in the business, I don't know, 25 years or so, but uh, it came time for the final walkthrough inspection, and uh, they found a lot of bad stuff on the carpets because they had dogs in there, so I guess you can guess what was on the carpets. <laughs> and uh, somehow or another, they went ahead and closed. I said, well, let me see your final walkthrough inspection. He said, I don't, I don't ever do those things. Yeah, well, so you're doing it wrong. Don't do that. You, <laughs> you got to do those things. You got to do those things. So do the final walkthrough inspection. Yeah, I don't inspection. like to deposit earnest money. <laughs> <laughs> Just an inconvenience. Well, you know, I had a lady call me the other day. She wanted that earnest money right up quickly, you know. But she says, what if they're closed on Monday and we can't deposit it? Well, the contract tells you you go to the next day. It's it's in the contract. Yeah, well, I'm glad she called me. She's a really nice young lady, and she says she wants to have lunch with me. I said, well, okay. Drive over to my side of town. We'll do that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you can lay some tile while you're over there, right? Lay some tile. Help my wife lay tile. <laughs> well, my wife's getting a tile laid. Um, let's see what else we had here. And, and we're getting these once in a while. Here's another one that came through. One of the gals called me up last Wednesday and said the investor won't close. They had an investor buy the house, and they won't close now. Uh, through the escrow period and everything, now it's time to close. They said they won't close because they found a lot of things wrong with the house. Have you heard this before? Sure you have. Well, they want to take $10,000 off the price, and that's the one they use all the time. So understand that that exists there, but one of the things you want to make sure you, you do is get some earnest money out of these people. They usually say, yeah, we'll give you lots of earnest money, like uh, maybe we'll give you five grand or something, but they never deposit it. They never deposit it. You keep messing with it, and uh, they close fast within a couple weeks, and they never get the earnest money in there. So you can't really nail that. It's going to go the other way. If they don't come down $10,000, can you get the earnest money? Yeah, if you go to court. But it's, it's another one of those contracts, a quick close, and it's over the listed price and everything. So be careful of the uh, some of the investors that you might get in there. Um, that uh, and, and I get a lot of these, especially in the summertime when there's so much heat out there. People call up and because their air conditioning is broke and they are tenants. And then if you try to get that fixed for them, you're working on it and uh, they finally can't stand it any longer. So they call the broker because the broker can get this done. And what do they call it? Well, your agent is giving me the run around. <laughs> They'll run around. That's what you get. And I know that's not true. <laughs> these these the property managers, they want to get this fixed, so that, but they can't find anybody right now that can do it today. Well, they want it done today. And I got somebody in the house that's sick, and they go into all kinds of things. But the, I work with them and try to make them happy. I gave him a call and got into it pretty good with him and then I called him back after I got a hold of the agent and they seemed to settle down a little bit. So you have to just pay some extra attention from the broker and that's what we're here for, to help them out on these things. What else? Lead-based paint. Lead-based paint, what's that deal? Well, it's in the contract. Uh, you, you don't ever... 
need that stuff too often, uh, except in a house that's older than 1978, and uh, nobody worries about it too much. So here we have the closing that happened, and still the LBPA, lead-based paint, addendum has not been filled out and things haven't been done. So the agent calls me and says, how can I get the, the other agent to finish this? I said, well, I, this is pretty serious and I know that you don't know that it's serious. Um, but here's the deal. And I, I erred in what I said. I said, there's a $11,000 federal fine for messing around with lead-based paint stuff if you get a complaint. Well, then I talked to Michael and found out that's been increased to 16000 So they're, they're serious about lead-based paint. You need to take care of that, folks. Make sure that it gets done. And have you ever been fined $16,000 before? You could be. And we won't pay it. You will. So. All right, Bob. Appreciate it. As always, leave you with the quote of the day from Joshua J. Marine. Challenges are what make life interesting, and overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. And if you wake up with a $16,000 fine, you'll need to go out and sell a home. 